The main hat we wear as producers, out of many, is casting and assigning tasks, and doing this visually makes it easier for us. We also need to be able to manipulate our schedules by splitting tasks and creating offsets. Let's start with some basics using the tasks we created in the previous topics. To stow or unstow the Gantt, double-click on the two vertical lines on the right-hand side of the task view. Let's then orient ourselves to today. First, we just received a change order that a shot is being extended and will need some additional water effects. Let's highlight the effects task affected. That way we can visually identify it on the Gantt a little easier. We can click and drag the handle on the end of the effects taskbar to change the duration of the task. We can also select the bar itself to change the start date and end date of the task. And we can also select a number of tasks and make changes to the group. All of these changes that we've just made in the Gantt are live and will be reflected in our task view. Note that we also have the option to revert the most recent change by clicking undo in the yellow bar. Let's also alert everyone affected by the change order with a quick note. To navigate the Gantt, we can adjust the size by dragging the divider and then the time period we wish to see using the zoom slider on the top right side of the Gantt. When we want to reorient ourselves to today, we click the Today button, which will center the Gantt on today's date. Now, let's make things a little easier to read across our schedule page by selecting the Gantt Display, Advanced, Fields to Right, or Left depending on our visual preference, Task Name. Now, we just got word from our client that one of our assets is delayed due to the artwork for this asset needing a redesign. Notice how on the left we see all of our tasks are grouped by asset. Another option we want to take advantage of in the Gantt display dropdown is grouping bars. This will make it so that if we want to move tasks that are grouped together in one action, we can do so by enabling this. Notice the gray bars that are at the top of each grouping. Now we select the bar and it will move all the grouped tasks and done. We can also do this by creating dependencies. On our signal project, like most creative projects, certain tasks will be dependent upon other tasks being completed before they can start. Remember, we've used our task template to populate shot and asset tasks, and on each shot, we typically have these five main tasks that need to be completed before we consider the shot final. In order, we have layout, animation, effects, lighting, and comp tasks. The animation task cannot start before the layout task is completed, effects needs to start after the animation is completed, then lighting, then comp, and so on. Each of these tasks has an artist we've assigned, with a start date and due date we've determined. Each due date is scheduled so that the following task does not start before the previous task is due. In the Gantt, notice that each of these tasks is represented as a colored bar consistent with the color of the pipeline step that the task falls within. If we click and drag one of these bars to alter the start and due date, other tasks will be affected, since we've made them all dependent. Let's go ahead and undo this by clicking Undo. Check out how we have dependencies across these two shots, where we can see the layout task on Rock 51 is dependent on the comp task on Rock 50. Typically, shots, assets, and other things we're tracking aren't dependent on each other in this way, and as a best practice, we want to limit this to one-off scenarios. In this case, it really comes in handy since Rock 50 is a key shot and needs to be completed before Rock 51 can start. Let's now go to another shot that we need to schedule and create task dependencies on. We can make this a bit more automated based on the bit information that's in Shotgun. Let's make sure that the duration column is displayed and double check that there are durations for all of the tasks we need to schedule. We can do this visually or we can expose the duration filter widget and look for blanks and fill those in. Next, let's select the group of tasks we want to create a dependency on. In this case, it's a shot, but in other cases, 
It may be an entire sequence or assignee. We can select the group of tasks in the list or click and drag the tasks in the Gantt directly. Then right click, dependencies, link selected. Now we know when we'd like the layout to start, so we enter this date in the start date field. Now we have all tasks in the shot scheduled out and dependent so that when we shift the upstream dependent task, it will move all the downstream dependent tasks as well. Notice the arrow now indicating the dependency from one task to the next. Now when we select the layout task and start sliding it further down the schedule, all of its following tasks will cascade. Also, if we change the start date of our layout task, it will update all the start and due dates on linked dependent tasks. Note that it's likely the bid will match the duration on a task at the beginning of a project, but since the duration might change as the schedule changes, these fields are independent of each other. For instance, the duration will be longer than the bid when Mason is working on these three assets at one time where he is doing three one-day tasks over the course of three days, all in parallel. We can also split tasks when a task has been placed on hold due to a kickback needing to be done in an upstream department, like this kickback to modeling from texture on our Hero Rock asset. We can also set dependencies in our task templates so that connections are preloaded when we go to schedule each task. We covered this in the task and scheduling topic earlier on when we dissected the anatomy of a task, but briefly, Let's sort our tasks in the task template so that they appear in the right order on the page, then select all, right click, and select dependencies, link selected. If our tasks have a default duration, all we need to do is add a start for the first task in every shot or asset to automatically build our schedule, just as we did before. So now what happens if we've created dependencies on a shot but we can allow for some overlap. For instance, we have a set of shot tasks that are dependent, but we've spoken to our effects department and discussed that they can actually start the effects task prior to the animation completing, so there can be some overlap. In this case, we can right-click on the effects task and through dependencies, select Pin Selected Task. Then, we click and drag the effects task to start earlier before the animation is complete or we can enter the date directly into the start date field in list view. But this time, notice that there is a dependency violation on the effects task, throwing us a warning. If we click into the violation, we can see all the details outlining that this task starts four days earlier than it should based on the end date of its upstream tasks. From here, we have these options. We can unpin this task, we'll adjust the start date automatically, we can push the start date four days to Monday, March 11th. We can view dependent tasks in a new window. In this case, we're cool with the violation since we've made an exception and can overlap with the previous task. And along the same lines as pinning a task, we may not want a task to start right after its upstream task's due date. We can add a positive or negative offset by holding down the Option or Alt key and moving the taskbar. A tooltip tells us the duration of the offset, positive or negative days. It's great to set offsets when we have a task that needs to start the same day as its dependency, instead of having that task automatically starting on the next day. This is also useful for tasks that happen in parallel, like these two Astrid will be working on. We can drag back to create an offset equal to the duration that makes the downstream task start the same day as its upstream dependency. We can also set dependencies on tasks and arrange their order by using the option click drag method. This is option on a Mac and alt on Windows and Linux. Once we see the black dot, we can click on the arrow to manually create a dependency in the order we prefer. Let's do this for the kickback that will affect our asset client review milestone. All right, now let's revisit our signal asset schedule and see if we can find any more artists that are working on more than one task at once so we can load balance. It looks like David is scheduled to work on two tasks in parallel. Instead of rescheduling the tasks, let's split them up. Splitting tasks allows us to split a taskbar on the Gantt into smaller segments to indicate a gap in performing the task. 
multiple splits are supported, and the duration field accurately represents the total of the splits. So, splitting the task will work perfectly in this scenario. On the taskbar, we right-click where we want to split the task and choose Split Task on Wednesday the 27th. The task will split into two where we selected, and then we just drag the second portion to begin where we'd like it to. We can even alternate the two over a period of time. Splitting tasks is also great to indicate gaps in work, like when someone goes on vacation. Note that we also have the ability to change the time scale of the Gantt to make it easier to click on the exact date we want. Once split, each segment is independent of the other, and we can adjust the start date, due date, and duration by dragging the segments of the bar as we would with any taskbar on the Gantt. Clicking once creates a yellow box around the taskbar that allows us to interact with the taskbars of the task as a whole, while double-clicking the bar creates a blue box around the taskbar and lets us manipulate the individual split portions. We can remove all splits from the task by right-clicking on the task in the Gantt and then choosing Clear All Splits on Task. We can also drag one segment into another to heal that portion of the task. This will only clear the split that sits between the two segments. While our current task view is grouping tasks by link, meaning an asset or a shot in our case, we want another tab that shows us tasks by assigned to. That way, we can visualize this data a little differently. Once we have this view established, we can easily switch between them and split more tasks where artists are working on them in parallel, like David was, and then we can fix any additional overlap. While splitting task is something we can do per task, let's dig in a little bit more on the gray areas that are set to our schedule and reflect weekends and holidays. While viewing our Gantt, we notice that the tasks are grayed out and not scheduled over the weekend, and in some cases, other days that are grayed out. If we hover over these days, we can see further details, like the days off and why. These are referred to as work schedule rules. But if we want to see or adjust more days in our schedule, we need to edit our work schedule. Okay, so full disclosure, work schedules are a bit sensitive and with one update can have a sweeping effect on our entire schedule. That said, it's highly suggested we proceed with caution and talk to an admin prior to making any changes. There are three main areas to work schedules that we can familiarize ourselves with. First is the default. This work schedule applies globally to all projects and is appropriate for defining a standard work week as well as studio-wide holidays. For example, we can establish a five-day work week as a global default and mark our studio-wide observed holidays. Second is projects. Every project can have its own work schedule. We don't have to configure project work schedules if we don't have project-specific scheduling. The idea here is to give us the ability to have a project scheduling override the default work schedule if necessary. For instance, if a certain project has unique scheduling constraints, like a three-day work week, we can make those into project-specific work schedules. Ah, dreamy, right? Third is people, where people can have their own work schedules. These are great for specifying in very granular detail individual working time and observed holidays affecting the schedule. For example, we can schedule one person to work during a company holiday while others have the time off, though we hope that never happens. We can also multi-select people to set schedule rules for a particular group or department all at once. This also comes in handy when we have people working remotely from different countries observing holidays at different times. For more information on work schedules, check out our support site documentation on them. And for more scheduling tips and tricks, be sure to see our Street Smarts tutorial.